start chopping them. Hey, welcome in everybody. Just like Tony said, it's time to get to chopping. So what we have right here is a muscadine vine that is overgrown and we are just gonna start going into this thing and laying in the work on it. For anyone who doesn't know what a muscadine is, a muscadine is a grape that is native to the southeastern United States. A common use for muscadines would be making wine. There are lots of wineries around North Carolina where I live that exclusively make muscadine wine or scuppernongs. If you've never seen a muscadine grape, a quick Google search will show you that they are slightly sized a little bit larger than your standard grape that you typically find at the grocery store. So why am I doing this trimming job right here with Tony? Well, just like the other jobs here at Mamaw's house, is this has just been overgrown over the last few years and it was time that it needed some TLC. Now me and Tony are about to get closer into the base of the vine and you can really start to see that the structure itself was really starting to sag and in some places just completely fell over. So it was time that this job got done. Now I'm clearly gonna to have to rebuild this trellis system and I have to rearrange some of these T-posts since they are actually placed beside the base of the vine and they're supposed to be out to the sides of it. Yeah, he's been sitting over there. Uh, right over there by the burn pile. Really? Yeah. Come home one day, he's just sitting up there. I think that'd be kind of cool to somehow kick it. I have no idea how to do that, but it'd be kind of cool. What is this? What is looking on his phone? Uh, Google how to kick a bison or a hawk. Or... I had read something about that one time too. I think he put like a dead mouse out and like a the same place or something like that? Yeah. And he's most likely got to get a younger one. Yeah. The downside of that is... Yeah. Somehow caught one. Then I wouldn't have the right thing to, <laughs> to protect anything. I'd just have to go get like three coats. <laughs> I hope that it didn't cut, cut, cut through them. Mm -hmm. Now here's some dead vine up in here. Yeah, I think some old yonder needs to dig that out yeah. too. That's a dead right in here. I'll tell you, I ain't surprising. I know, man. Now I wanted to leave that part in there. One, to kind of show you the pace that me and Tony were having to work. And also, if anybody actually knows anything about falconing, please let me know because I'm actually interested in it. Hey, 
initially when I thought we got to the other side, it was going to become a little bit easier since we had taken a lot of the weight off. That turned out to not be quite as true just because all of the vines that we had already cut that didn't make it out on the other side were still intertwined and we had to pull them out again. Now you can see how this one half over here is starting to take shape. We've cut a lot of vine off at this point and still have a lot to go, but you can really kind of see what we were going for here. Now, if you can't tell what that is, it's just some type of small wire that had been added throughout the years to help support the base of the vine. But clearly it didn't work because it just grew around it. All right, we've made our way down to the other half over here where the post have fallen. This side was a lot trickier just because we had to work closer to the ground and there was a lot of different roots growing through there. And you can see probably through parts of all of this, there were some green vines that were through there. That was honeysuckle. So there was actually a lot of honeysuckle still growing within this whole system too. I was actually surprised at how well the vine had been growing just due to all the weeds that were growing within it and to my surprise there was actually a lot of shoots coming out of the ground looking for their own way but they didn't have anywhere to go so hopefully here in the future when I start to rebuild this trellis system some of these new shoots can replace some of the dead ones. I totally forgot that we had those scissor trimmers out there. So Tony grabbed them. And when he did that, we really started making some headway there. Right around in this area under all that brush is actually a water line. There's a spigot that's coming out of the ground for the old cow pasture that was actually in place where this vine was planted. Thankfully, this was the last portion right here. And just like the water line we found, we also found an old birdhouse in this spot. We finally made it to the home stretch here. And all in all, this job only probably took us two hours, maybe three. Um, I didn't really keep time that afternoon. But what actually caught my eye was how big this pile was right here of how many vines that were cut from that thing and how big the pile ended up becoming.
And the main reason that I'm putting these posts over here in their own separate pile and not on the brush pile is I'm gonna take those to the dump along with the, the vines that actually had the wire growing through it. I didn't wanna burn that and then have metal left over. And just like that, we were greeted by the dogs. That is Bodie and Wally. One's a poodle and one's a golden doodle. That whole pile surprisingly probably burned in 30 minutes. And here's a few days later, I had forgot to do a reveal of the work that Tony and I had done. And here it is, here's what it looks like. All right, that's gonna wrap up the first video for the muscadine trimming right there. Uh, got quite a bit done, thanks to Tony. Really appreciate his help. Um, next phase is gonna be getting some new posts in the ground, get it and get rewired, get in some more structure. That way, uh, some of the new shoots can have something to grab onto and kind of get spread out. Um, we cut it back quite a bit, as you saw, uh, but with being a muscadine vine, and from what I understand, they're pretty resilient. So I'm not too worried about it getting killed off or something like that. And even if it does, it's not the end of the world. I can probably get a new one if I needed to. But overall, this is a good first start and still more to come. Dr. Trevor.